My name is Malcolm McNeil. I'm 29 years old. I live in Brooklyn, New York, born and raised in the Bronx. Um, right now, I am marketing director for Ghetto Gastro. I'm a photographer and picking up screenwriting now. The way I would describe what I geek on is screenwriting, namely because people talk about how art imitates life, but, you know, this is literally the art of imitation when you look at screenwriting, you know, taking words in someone else's mind, giving it to an actor, having them perform it, and having them presumably, usually, imitate something else that inspired those words. So I was always interested in screenplays, but I started geeking over screenplays with one of my first jobs. I was working at a NBC show called The Blacklist. Uh, it was a function of my job to literally read every script and every revision of said script um, for the art department. You know, as an RPA, it's literally your job to scan that script and look at the words on the page and help provide the visuals for what the setting will be. Um, you know, whether you're in someone's living room and you needed you know, childhood photos or you're in a Russian train car and needed a menu, you had to figure out what that was by taking it off the page itself and turning words into real visuals. I feel like anything could be screen written in terms of day-to-day -day life to basketball to, you know, anything. Who knows what a Russian train car menu looks like until you look it up. Um, so it came with a lot of research and understanding, you know, what makes these things authentic. And even if the, the screenplay only passively refers to said item, figuring out what feels right for what we're making. So being on the visual side, it was a lot of fun because I learned a lot about things that, you know, you don't quite notice until you look in the background of your favorite show and realize, yeah, someone was sitting sitting there in an office, um, you know, plotting on how to make this, this item authentic to the scene. What fused my obsession with screenwriting is the organic adaptation. You can take something out of thin air, like an organic conversation, and you can turn that into screenwriting. You know, sitting in a cafe, you're, you're standing around a bunch of source material. Um, I think about you know, the basic idea of loving literature and reading and writing and, and understanding that you're more likely to adapt a book into a screenplay than you are a movie into a book. The origins of my obsession came in the form of my parents. They are definitely one of the biggest inspirations in that department because at an early age, they, they established that whatever they were watching, I was watching. One of the things that always stuck to me about, you know, something that my dad used to tell me was the theater was his first uh, babysitter. He used to say that his mom would take him there after school, pay a dollar for a flick, and he'd spend the day there doing his homework, you know, occasionally inviting friends over, doing whatever, and uh, getting through the day that way, which to me was always a very special, special piece of information because it showed that you could spend the whole day in the theater. You could do everything you needed there and uh, still turn out okay. Yeah, man, this geeking shit doesn't stop. It goes every month, every week. You know, I can find something new, and most recently it's been Japanese jazz. Interestingly enough, I always always had an interest in jazz, I mean, by, by way of my father. Um, I think jazz, to me, has always been the most appropriate uh, music for films, too, um, especially, you know, just evoking deep feelings, and, and particularly in, in New York for some reason. I, I don't know if it... It's just me, but I feel like jazz always has a you know a home in urban landscapes. And um, I had gone to a you know a speakeasy in, in Midtown. I've been going there for years, and I had realized like, oh wow, like Japanese jazz, the style is, is different. There's different things about it that makes it you know that makes it its own genre. Um, and up until you know recently, I'm like, 
oh, I never really delved in. I, you know, I'd be consuming it, but I never delved in. And uh, it caused me to just go on this hunt, you know, just figure out, you know, where that connection is because, you know, you hear stories about Coltrane in Japan and, you know, and how it's, he has such a big influence over there, but I'm like, okay, what came of it? What, what's the output, you know? Um, and, you know, it's led me to brand new artists and different sounds. My geeking has honestly opened a lot of doors for me. Um, starting with professionally, it was screenwriting and, you know, the practice of it and the idea of learning it that helped me in photography, helped me open that door in general. Uh, it was the first bridge between the words and visuals, you know, and, and in a lot of ways, that is my end, is figuring out, you know, how to do that in, do it perfectly and do it the best that I can do it. Um, I think that from there, I was, you know, inspired by new thoughts of bringing words off the paper into a photograph and, you know, vice versa. It helped me then propel into my next few positions. You know, I went from a TV set, you know, reading scripts every day to bringing my photography to streetwear. And that to me was, was priceless, you know, from, from TV show to Flight Club to Ghetto Gastro and, uh, you know, so on.